What's cracking YouTube, Neck Punch here. And there are a lot of animals in our world that are yet to have Pokemon based on them. So I thought it'd be fun to challenge my friend Dead Bedspread to make some Fakemon based on a few particularly interesting animals. Yeah, hey, hello everybody, it's me, Dead Bedspread. He suggested that instead we make a list of some interesting animals together, we go away, separately design Fakemon for each of them, and then come back together and compare results to see how similar or different our designs would end up being. It was an extremely fun process, a real celebration of the fact that two different artists can look at the exact same thing and be inspired in completely different ways. In this video, we're going to take a look at the mons that we each designed for the animals I picked, and on Dead Bedspread's channel, we'll look at the animals he picked and the mons we each did for them. The first animal I picked was the Sawfly, because it's a pretty interesting insect with a terrifying name that kind of already sounds like it could be a Pokemon. And also because we had a bit of a sawfly problem near my house at the time, so they were on the brain. I took the inspiration pretty literally and came up with this Pokemon, Serraterra. Side note, I really like Pokemon with rhyming names for some reason, like Roly Coley. This won't be the last one in the video like this. I went with Bug Dark for Serraterra, mostly because it's one of the only unused bug type combos and I think it fits really well. I give it a signature move called Buzzsaw a powerful physical bug type move with a chance to paralyze. Now, I honestly had no idea what a sawfly was until Neck Punch mentioned it. So following an in-depth research session, I can now confidently say that I have some idea of what a sawfly is. One fun fact is that the females of the species have a saw-like appendage on their ovipositors, thus giving them the name. And therefore, I created the female-only species, Buzzator. Larger than most bug-type Pokémon, Buzzator's abdomen consists of six spinning buzzsaws, which they could slam into their opponents for maximum damage. It's even got saw-shaped wings too. This mon could be found in forests and jungles. And as for types, I'm thinking just bug currently. Maybe bug and steel. Maybe Buzzator and Serraterra could be gender-exclusive evolutions for a sawfly larva fake man. What do you think? The next animal I picked was the Nudibranch. And we already have a sea slug Pokemon, but I wanted to challenge Dead Bedspread to do a nudibranch because there's so many fascinating types that could be all kinds of Pokemon, and I was really curious to see which one he'd choose. Nothing could have made me happier than designing a nudibranch because, as mentioned, there are so many insane and funky designs to these real world critters. After scouring through the many crazy species I found, I settled on this one Philodesmium Miriomotens. Uh, what? Yeah, scientific names are pretty bananas. This gorgeous multi-branched nudibranch inspired the ever-lovable dudibranch. Ever-flowing and glowy, this little guy can absorb light. Using its stored-up solar rays, it can gather its energy and fire devastating blasts. All by looking cute as heck, I might add. As for types, I'm thinking water light. This little guy would definitely look cool on the whole and seafloor, illuminating its surroundings. Well, I, on the other hand, went with the opalescent nudibranch. Or I guess if we're doing scientific names, Hermicenda opalescens. Hmm, yeah. Maybe I should have practiced that one. Well, this is Volatire, an electric fire type, which is a combination of a nudibranch and an electrical fire. I've been wanting to base a mon off an electrical fire for a long time, but I struggled to come up with a more interesting concept than just a sentient pile of flaming wires. But when I saw the opalescent nudibranch, I knew I had my creature, and it all came together. I threw in a few aspects of the Spanish shawl as well, which you can see better in the shiny. Volatile's signature ability is open circuit. If hit by a water type move, it takes no damage and paralyzes the user of that move. Because you can't fight an electrical fire with water, you end up getting electrocuted. You have to smother that thing, which also fits with this guy being four times weak to ground. Now finally, I challenged Dead Bedspread to make a Goblin Shark Pokemon. Even more than the others, the Goblin Shark is basically already a Pokemon. I mean, what the actual heck is it? It's the kind of animal that as a Pokemon would probably have a really cool attack animation, but I wanted to design something I could put into a game, and that meant something that'd translate well to sprites rather than animations. My wife made the suggestion of giving it two different forms, and the idea was born. This is Robogobba in its closed form. It's actually an eel-like Pokemon, which lives inside a shark-shaped armor casing, and it has the ability Stance Change. When it attacks, it transforms into its open form, swapping its defensive and offensive stats. 
A goblin shark would have absolutely been one of my suggestions if neck punch didn't beat me to the neck punch. I took the concept of goblin shark a bit more literally and came up with gobsnack. This shark's snout looks like a big nose. It's fin a curled up hat, its upper fins resemble gloved hands and its lower fins feet and it's got a deadly dagger shaped tail. The only type I can think for this guy is water dark and sure we already have a water dark shark but hey the more the merrier. But what about the goblin shark's primary feature, its ghastly mouth? Well, you may have noticed Gobsnack's teeth running all the way down behind its gills. Well, when it attacks, whoa! Its whole mouth suddenly slides out, allowing it to take massive bites out of its opponent, and also look pretty ridiculous. A big thanks to Dead Bedspread for joining me and indulging me in this crazy idea. Thank you very much, Neck Punch, for doing this project with me, and thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to check out Dead Bedspread's channel for even more fake one from both of us based on the animals he chose. Things get arguably even weirder and more amazing in that video. Until next time, my name is Neck Punch. Have a good one.